Hi, I'm Brett Beckman, board certified veterinary dentist. Welcome to the Vet Dental Show, our veterinary dental practitioner program. Registration officially is November 12th on Sunday. We're going to be do a, doing a live training at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. As podcast listeners only, and this is only for podcast listeners, and this is only for our past wet lab participants the last two times we've done wet labs. If you go to IVDI, IVDI.org slash 2024, we've got something special for you there to secure your spot in the class of 2024. There's only 48 veterinarians that will be able to be in that class. And by securing your spot, you'll also get a considerable discount on your tuition. So again, visit ivdi.org 2024 and all the information's there. We hope to see you in that class. We talked about the periodontal curette a couple episodes ago and how I really didn't understand that Practitioners didn't realize that that was an important part of, of dentistry and prevention. And there's a couple of other things that I started thinking about after that, that in talking to our wet lab participants and talking to the veterinarians in the veterinary dental practitioner program, I've come to find out there there is another entity that is common enough that we should know about it and it's so dramatic for the patient that we should we should be aware of how to recognize it but it's not common knowledge which again I had no idea that it wasn't so we want to talk about that and the condition itself is something that we would maybe see in a patient that has had dentistry procedures done periodically and increasingly we're finding that the time between the dental cleaning in the hospital under anesthesia is less and less and maybe that the owner is recognizing that the odor comes back quicker or maybe the patient is not really exhibiting behavior that they did previously in many, many different aspects. They're just not as happy. They're not as active. They're, they're not eating as voraciously. There, there may be other, other things involved there, but it also might be something that we see in practice that we could catch way earlier than when the owner or the pet parent decides that this is enough of a problem that they need to come back and check with us as general practitioners to to see what's going on and this this problem is evidenced by changes in the gum tissue that are there and and that we can see when we do our cleaning but we may attribute it to periodontal disease or we may attribute it to the the calculus that's built up on the, the crown of the teeth, especially the back teeth and maybe the canine tooth, but we, we just don't think that maybe it's something other than that. And that's certainly certainly a, a common common thought. I mean it's a, it's a it's a logical thought. But if if we see that we have some unusual changes in the mucosal tissue, and that is basically the unattached gingiva over the canine tooth where the lip rests over the canine tooth or commonly in the caudal oral cavity in the uh, tissue adjacent to the lip or, or I'm sorry the, the lip tissue adjacent to the the caudal cheek teeth and when we see that it should ring a bell that this might be something different if it's more than what we would normally expect. So any increase in the amount of inflammation 
and erythema in that mucosal tissue, any odor, any discharge, all of that leads back to one big possibility, and that is we're dealing with what we used to call cups or chronic ulcerative periodontal stomatitis, and what we now call CCUS or canine chronic ulcerative stomatitis. That is an extremely difficult disease to manage with anything other than extraction of the teeth that are causing the, the changes in the adjacent tissue. So when that lips at rest, whether it be the canine, whether it be the incisors, the premolars, the, the caudal cheek teeth, or any combination thereof, extracting the teeth that are associated with that inflammation is curative. And we want to learn to recognize that in practice because it is pathognomonic for this problem. So looking at some of the the images online, or in this case, if you're if you're on YouTube, we have some some characteristic images that we see when we're when we're dealing with this that are pretty diagnostic. The canine tooth, again, where that tissue rests overneath the crown, overneath. That's a new word. <laughs> where that where that tissue rests over the top of the crown, then you could expect to see with, with CCUS a significant change in a, an oval or circular area right above that. You may even see ulceration of that tissue where it actually is white and it, it, if you run your finger across it, it will literally flake off like a an ulcer that we would see in the mouth from other reasons or maybe a, a, a wound uh, on the skin that is getting getting necrotic and stays moist so that's that's one thing that can happen it doesn't have to be there but it is an indication that it's super painful and very serious when it gets to that point so look for that and also look for inflammation in the rest of the mouth and you'll see that uh, quite commonly in the caudal cheek teeth. You can see it anywhere, however. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see this image of the, the lower arcade and the adjacent tissue is just really, really inflamed and really involved. <clears throat> and you can get this purulent debris that is very odorous. You can generally smell it when the patient walks in the exam room, unfortunately. And most of them, not all of them, but most of them are very reluctant to any type of oral manipulation because they're really painful. Some, for some reason, and maybe it's the epinephrine, the fight or flight, they're not, they're not thinking about that. Uh, they've got too much epinephrine coursing through their veins when they're in that exam room and they're, they're kind of masked a little bit from, from that uh, reaction. I don't know, but it, it certainly is unusual not to, not to find them where they are not painful, but the, the ones that are, that may be part of, the, part of the reason why. But nevertheless, being able to recognize this and knowing that if you have a patient that comes in that has been in that situation where they've had cleaning, or maybe you're cleaning and you notice there's a lot more inflammation than you would expect. A good way to diagnose this, if you're not sure and you haven't seen it a couple times and know that, that it's there, number one, you can, you can certainly biopsy it and you can get a reasonable reading on whether that is a, is a likely possibility or not from the pathologist. But another way to do that is to get the patient back in two weeks when you would expect after that cleaning and that plaque's gone off those teeth, that that tissue has gone back to normal or near normal. If that's not the case, and you recheck them a couple weeks later and you start to see progression of, of minor inflammation, 
then you know that you're probably dealing with this and that's that's the time to really get aggressive and start talking to the owner about the, the treatment plan. And that would be to extract the teeth adjacent to the areas that have that mucosal irritation, inflammation, and ulceration. Very difficult for the patient, very, very rewarding for you when you diagnose this and you resolve it, especially if this has been a chronic problem with the patient. Steroids do help this considerably. So if you do get a patient in and you are faced with this and you can't make a diagnosis, you're waiting on that, the inflammation and the pain is probably best managed with that, uh, with corticosteroids. It also is partially amenable to other analgesics, but you get a dramatic effect with that. You can also use topical anti-inflammatories like TDC, which is an esterified fatty acid that can be used topically. It comes in a little gel cap and you can have the owners either place it in the food or if they will allow manipulation, uh, it can be placed in the corner of the mouth and just squirt it in the corner of the mouth and then the patient will, with manipulation of the tongue and, and the oral tissues normally, disperse that throughout the mouth and it will be effective as well. But the main driver for these guys for relief is corticosteroids. So not something we want to consider long term. We want to get these patients back. We want to get them treated. And once they're treated, they are like brand new puppies. They are just so, so much better. They're back to normal probably for the first time in months or maybe even years in some cases, and the owners are ecstatic. It's just amazing the difference between uh, how they were, even if they really didn't recognize that they were that bad, and how they are after they're treated. So learn to recognize this. It's definitely something that we want to keep in the back of our, our minds and, our, and keep on our radar as a possibility for patients that have extensive inflammation that goes beyond what we would think would be perio or would fit that scenario that I just discussed. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully it'll give you some insight on some of these patients. Hopefully we can catch these guys early and hopefully you'll not see them, uh, not have them, but when they do come, come your way, you'll be able to recognize them. So have a great week and we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. I really hope you love that episode of the Vet Dental Show. Again, if you're a veterinarian and you want to be the best in dentistry and general practice that you can be, we've got something special for you at ibdi.org 2024 to be part of our class of 2024. One of 48 veterinarians to get into that class and you'll secure your spot early before the November 12th training that we have to make sure that you're in that group and make sure that you're off to the races as far as building your skills and your dentistry program in your hospital.